Hi everyone, I'll try that again. My name is Tam. Welcome to this special studio session to celebrate International Day of People with Disability. My name is Tam. Uh, I am your host for today. I run a consultancy called Create Business and I'm very pleased and honoured to be here for an hour with John Willis and Eliza Hull. Hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Before we get into conversation today, I'm going to do an acknowledgement to country. The Emporium Creative Hub acknowledges the traditional owners, the Jar Jar Jarung people, on whose land we meet, share, work and create. We pay our respects to elders and leaders past, present and emerging, for they hold the memories, the traditions, the cultures and hopes of all Jar Jar Jarung peoples. Today, um, I'm uh, looking forward to um, getting a great conversation started with John and Eliza. I'm going to do through a formal intro to you both uh, so our audience can get to know you. Hi, everyone. If you're there on Facebook, I'm so glad you can join us. Um, if you wanted to do a shout out and uh, let us know that you're there, that would be lovely. Um, Eliza is one amazing woman and if you're wondering like me that is a typewriter behind her. Eliza is a contemporary musician, composer and disability advocate based in Regional Victoria. Her music has been described as stirring, captivating and heart heartfelt. Her compositions have been used in ABC Kids TV, TV episode and then something changed. ABC The Heights and American TV shows Awkward, Teen Wolf and Saving Hope. Her music has been played on radio nationally, internationally, including ABC, RN, BBC and Triple J. She's toured nationally, internationally and she, uh, she has done a lot of performing things, which I won't go through right now, but she's also currently the... Um, Artistic Associate and Access and Inclusion Coordinator for Arena Theatre. And she's Music Director of the new theatre work called By. If I said that right, Eliza? Yeah, that's, that's right. Eliza is a proud disabled woman with a physical condition known as Shaku Mari Tooth. Is that right? Shaku Mari Tooth. Yes, she is. <laughs> She is a disability advocate within the contemporary music space and has performed at Ability Fest and spoken at a music conference, Changes, advocating for further accessibility for disabled musicians. She's created the successful podcast series, We've Got This on Parenting with Disability for the ABC. She also writes music for Create A, an inclusive theatre company for people with disability. Eliza, you are one amazing woman. It's just so great to have you here. And um, I've got to say, your practice has definitely, um, you know, changed my perspective in life and also my own creative practice. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me, John. John. John is a producer of art projects. He lives in Castlemaine, Central Victoria and works for a non-government organisation, Golden City Support Services, based in Bendigo. Uh, Golden City Support Services provides support to people with disabilities, people living with mental health, Ill mental illnesses and their carers. John co-founded the arts company Create A, previously known as Creativity, in 2002 as a means for people with disability to engage with contemporary arts practice. Create A is a program of Golden City Support Services. Um, John has uh, produced and and brought together numerous projects from Create A and I hope you've all had a chance to see some of them um, and we will be showing snippets of them today. Thank you so much John for joining us. It's so good that we could all come together and uh, have this conversation. Thanks Tam. I'm today. looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And welcome to Dave and um, Karen. I'm glad you can join us here on Facebook. If, if you do have some questions or you want to jump in with the conversation, please do join us. Today, um, 
we did organize to have um, an Auslan interpreter join us. Unfortunately, right at the last minute, um, Susan was unable to join our session of class. Our wonderful producer, Lyndon, is looking at um, a live captioning. I'm not sure if that's working or not, but um, yeah, we do, we do apologize. Eliza, I'm just going to jump straight on in and, and ask, why is speaking and exploring life with disability and, uh, can be such a taboo? What approach have you taken with this taboo in your creative practice? Okay, firstly, I just wanted to also give an audio description of myself. Um, I'm a white female and I have my hair uh, tucked up in a bun. I'm wearing a red suit jacket and uh, behind me is a round mirror. Um, I also have some flowers in the background, um, some decorative sticks and a typewriter, as Tam said, and I'm a person with disability. Uh, why, is it, why is disability still taboo? Uh, I think it really comes down to the fact that there isn't representation still. Um, you know, it's, it's obvious we, we turn on the TV, we go and see performance, uh, radio, magazines, we still don't see ourselves represented. And um, that really is, is problematic. Um, when I was growing up, I didn't see anybody like me on TV. And I really believe that you can't be what you can't see. And um, I think that that actually does feed into that idea that disability is taboo. It creates stigmas around disability. Uh, so I feel like greater representation is definitely the first step for it not to be taboo. Um, I also believe that enabling people with disability to actually be the people that get to share our stories. Uh, there's a lot of times where non-disabled people are um, you know, leaders within art organisations around disability and that again just feeds into to stereotypes and stigmas and misconceptions. So. I think it's also important that disabled people are up in front, are given leadership opportunities and are represented in the arts and in media. I love that idea of you can't be what you can't see. Yeah, I really believe it's true. I feel, I think we're definitely getting better with representation and the way that I noticed that was because I was actually starting to become comfortable with myself about five or six years ago. And I do think that that's because we are starting to have these conversations and, um, you know, our voices are being amplified and we're starting to, you know, these days, like International Day of People with Disability, they are important because it's not a level playing field still. I actually hope one day, you know, we don't potentially need these days. Um, I hope that it's just something that's ingrained in everything we do, that disability is at the forefront of people's minds instead of it being an afterthought, a uh, taboo. Um, there's been countless times where I've been, put, you know, asked to do an event around disability and speak about having a disability and I can't even get up on the stage. So it's, it's not thought about. Um, it's, yeah, just hope that that actually is something that is gradually changed so that we are included and there is access around, um, yeah, our involvement. I'm just going to say, I'm sure, John, you probably want to jump in and say something too, um, so feel free. I, I'm just going to, I'm going to be really a little bit stuck on this notion of um, you can't be what you what you can't see. And initially when I heard you say that, Eliza, I was thinking um, as a person, as an individual, but then I was thinking it's also a, a community thing of, um, or, or, you know, an, a, an identity that's shared amongst a lot of people um, and that sense of potentially, um, yeah, who, 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 you, who you are, who's, who's around you. Does that make sense? Like, do you Is mean that, the um, community, like being with, ingrained in the disability community can enable you to be yourself? Is that what you mean? Well, just just thinking about when you think about who we are as a society and who makes up a society and, you know, who makes up 
being a leader or a decision maker and, and what and, and what those people might look like. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think that um, kind of, I, I think that um, generally, you know, it, it's it's been a while, it's taken us a long time to kind of recognise diversity gen generally, you know, whether it's disability or culture or um, sexuality or anything, um, you know, we're, we're it, it's like we're still sort of waking up to it everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it's what's been encouraging is that I think that disability has come along on that journey when for so long it's felt like disability um, has been the last thing to kind of join these social movements. Do, what do you think, Eliza? Oh, I think you're, yeah, you're spot on. I think the diversity, yeah, is definitely being celebrated um, and these conversations are starting to happen and it's fantastic. There's still so much work that needs to be done, but it's, yeah, I definitely feel that, which is, which is really great. It's, um, people are actually looking and going, you know, what does make up our organisation? How can we employ people with disability? Uh, they're realising that it's time that we give the space. For so long it hasn't been there. Yeah, I, th I think so. And I think, like, particularly from working in um, a disability support agency and looking at the history of, um, you know, disability support, which has been for a long time very much focused on, you know, what are we doing for people with disability? Um, and now we're, we're shifting that again to think, well, what is it that people with disability have to contribute? Uh, and, what, you know, what are the things that we're missing out on by not having that contribution? Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think there's been a shift in that as well. Definitely. Yeah, I'm getting excited. Um, I just wanted to also shout out to our audience. Um, if you do have some ideas that are coming up for you around, as we're talking about um, disability and creative practice or the notion of inclusion, um, and diversity, love to hear from you. Hi, Marie, thank you for joining us and acknowledging the work that um, John and Eliza do. Thank you. Yeah. Eliza, just, you know, thinking about these big ideas um, and um, what, and I, you know, what I admire so much is the approach you've taken um, with um, ideas of inclusion and disability and identity and um, it's really uh, how you've adopted them or driven them in your um, creative practice, if that makes sense. And so I'd like to know a bit about the, the approach you've taken with your creative practice mm -hmm. um, and also what sort of opportunities or unexpected um, opportunities or, uh, that have come out of your creative practice? Well, I guess, you know, when I first met John, I'm trying to think how long that was, John, when I reached out to you. Like, oh, goodness. Um, we're going back four, four or five years now. Yeah, you're right, actually. Yeah, five mm. years ago. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, you know, when I reached out to John, I I don't know whether you remember this, John, but I, I wasn't really in the, the space, even though I've had a disability since I was five, I have a, a physical disability um, and it's it's very visible, but it is something that I've just hidden for so long. And I think that it was, um, I had, held on to internalised ableism. Ableism is like racism. And I held on to that internalised ableism. And well, I don't know, I guess I, I was scared. I was scared because of the way that I, you know, had people look at me and um, say things that were uncomfortable and hurtful and um, that really fed into this whole idea that disability is a negative thing. And I think, you know, reaching out to John and working with uh, Create A, which was formerly CreateAbility, uh, really was the, the starting point for me to explore what it meant to be a disabled person and what it meant to be a disabled artist. And to witness the incredible work of all the members of Creatability, again, enriched that practice and made me 
to start to feel comfortable in my skin. And the moment that I started feeling comfortable in my skin, I felt truly proud, truly proud. I felt like I was being me. I felt authentic. And when you feel authentic and you feel real, for some reason, I don't know what, you know, if you believe in things in the universe, it, everything just flowed. And um, I started to get more opportunity to speak. The more I spoke, the more I felt like weight was lifted off me and I felt like I was truly doing what I needed to do. It was like, you know, a purpose. I felt, you know, it felt like it gave me a purpose. The way that's fed into my musical practice and my artistic practice has only actually really started to take shape and develop in its full capacity just recently. Um, I have written a whole record now and it's all about disability and, and, and all about universal themes as well, about difference, about identity, about self-acceptance and, um, yeah, all, all these visual elements are really coming out of that and I'm so excited to explore that even further. I'm going to make a video clip and not only am I going to walk in my video clip, I'm going to do some you know, dancing and movement, which scares me. <laughs> but I don't I feel like that's where you find the really interesting stuff when you when you're scared, when you push those barriers that you face and push through those um that internalized fear, you know, those misconceptions that you've actually fed, you know, been fed into yourself and that internalized ableism. So I'm excited to see what comes of that. Um, but I haven't released that music yet. So we'll see. <laughs> I do also want to create work around disability with Arena. I think that would be really interesting because you know, young people, they are the future and um, you know, twenty percent of the population has a disability. And I think it would be really incredible for young people to have themselves represented, um, especially disabled people, but also for non-disabled young people to to see that and to gain that further understanding and awareness. I think that would be incredible. Mm. I would really, really love to see that happen. Hope so. <laughs> it would be great. Um, I, I'm more also uh, interested to know, Eliza, in you know going on your journey of. Um, you know, checking out what it is to be a person with a disability and an artist and a mum, um, you know, and everything else and having the space and permission to do that. What, what else has come out for you? And I, I'm, I'm imagining, you know, now as a, as a producer and someone who's, you know, making major bodies of works that are being shown on major networks around Australia, that, you know, that has perhaps opened up doors and opportunities that were unexpected. Yeah, sorry, Tam, you just cut out that last bit, that last question, sorry. Um, yeah, I think my internet's terrible today. I'm so sorry, everyone. I was saying that on your journey and, you know, making time and space and, and perhaps the support of working with Create A to explore what it is to be an artist with a disability, but also a, a mum with a disability and a person in a community with a disability and a woman as a, uh, with a disability, that, um, you know, you've moved into a way of creating and making works that maybe I'm thinking were unanticipated and have also created significant impact for a lot of people's lives. Well, thank you, firstly. I, you know, I, I hope so. I, um, I think that's really why you do things, isn't it, to try and impact change. Um, I think it really, again, it started with, I think, reaching out to John um, with Creatability and, and starting to make theatre with John. Um, but then it also was the, the the journalist work that I did, um, the audio series that was titled "We've Got This," and it's uh, is on parenting with a disability, and that again was really formed because I didn't feel represented. Um, and you just get so many books given to you, um, what to expect when you're expecting or baby love, all the names, you, and you, you never see yourself. So it, it made me realise that. Um, 
if I can't see myself in those books, then I'm sure all, pe all parents with disability uh, can't see themselves either. And so I wanted to uh, tell the story. So I, I travelled around Australia and interviewed some incredible parents um, around their experience with parenting. And for some reason, it really did resonate with people. And I think that, again, was just because there wasn't anything out around that. It's now being turned into a book, which is exciting. Um, and what's exciting, most exciting about that is that it will amplify more disabled voices and we'll get to hear the, the perspectives of more disabled voices. That's really what it's all about. Um, with the ABC Kids show, that was a complete chance you know you know I did put a, a bit of time into a, the application but I um yeah I I think again that was something that I really cared about and it was it was about the social model of disability I don't know if you know about that it's um med the medical model of disability is that um the medicalization of disability that you know it would be that I have a condition that needs to be fixed I have a problem Whereas the social model of disability looks at the wider society, that the society is actually the problem. It's, you know, it's not the, the fact that somebody's in a wheelchair that they can't get into the building. It's the fact that there is no ramp to get into the building. It's um, the built up world. It's the attitudes that we face. It's communication. Uh, they're all the barriers that the world has created. And they're, that's actually the problem that, that actually needs to be fixed. And so I wanted to tell that story in a way that kids could understand it. And so I focused the story on a person with dwarfism, uh, Theo, who lives in Castlemaine. And it was shot at Taradale and it was based on his, uh, his experience with the world loosely. Uh, but it was a live action drama where we got to see a day where everything didn't work in his world, but it actually looks... Uh, ordinary and uh, normal um, but then the next day he says that suddenly everything does work and that's actually when we see an accessible world being built the stairs start to move the locker at school moves so he can reach it the car door opens the car door lowers the gate opens to school all the things that are a challenge uh, in his day suddenly became what he had known which was accessible. And through that, we then got to see how that plays out with his uh, school world. And uh, kids at school, you know, started to show acceptance and inclusion. And it really shows it's not actually some, you know, it's not his impairment that needs to be fixed. It's the world that needs to be fixed. It's the world that actually needs to create more access and inclusion to, to provide uh, space for him to be included um so yeah that resonated with people which was absolutely fantastic and which has been a ball that's kept rolling for me and um i absolutely love working within this space it's um you know these stories to me are, are really important and yeah as i said before representation matters so i feel like i've yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fired up. I've got a lot, a lot to share, and I, you know, I'm not going to stop anytime soon. Yeah, certainly that that marrying up of passion and um, amazing talent kind of just has generated so much. You know, I think there's um, there's endless things that uh, Eliza's capable of. <laughs> oh, thank you, John. Well, I yeah, I really feel um, very lucky to have worked with you, and yeah, yeah hope to do in the future. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to thank you, sir. I'd like to shift the conversation um, to John now and and talk about um, Create A. Um, and I think um, you know Create A is um, I like to call it Bendigo's only exporting theatre company. Even though I haven't heard to say that exporting art product out into the world. What What is and who is Create A, John? Yeah, um, thanks, Tam. I, I'll also um, audio describe myself uh, as well. Um, so yes, my name's John Willis. Uh, I'm uh, 
uh, fair skinned man and I have grey hair almost to my shoulders now uh, mm -hmm. and uh, a, a, a trimmed beard. Uh, I'm wearing a dark blue t-shirt and I'm sitting in my home office which has got um, glass paned doors behind me um, uh, and I'm a non-disabled person. Um, so yeah look, uh, it, it has been an amazing journey um, over the, you know, uh, getting on for 18 years or something that we um, we established back then Creatability um, with Sarah McQueenie, um, who uh, she and I kind of were inspired by some groups in Melbourne, um, and particularly Wild at Heart, who... Um, produced dance parties, specifically inclusive dance parties that uh, had performers with disability. Um, and they were so inspiring that we thought, oh, we, we just have to have this in Bendigo as well. Um, and uh, Wild at Heart um, mentored us uh, back then. And we started out by just um, running dance parties because the social aspect for um, people with disability is so important as well. Um, uh, and and like a lot of the people that we're working with uh, are um, learning disabled or um, have intellectual disability. And um, many of those people don't have great social networks. Um, and so, you know, finding ways that they could ex express themselves and connect with others was what we saw as important. And I think that's been the kind of guiding um, aim, if you like, um, for, for Create A. Um, and I hope I'm still on screen because I think we're, things have Linda's disappeared. Just, yes, it's okay. I think Lynn's going to pop up some um, footage of oh, Create A while you're talking, John. Oh, excellent. There okay. we go. Yep. So, um, yes, and, and we began uh, doing dance parties and then alongside that running some workshops around performance. And we were just amazed at the, the response we got from people doing that. Um, so it, it's really built from there. And we've, uh, we decided that we would uh, always employ artists, always employ working artists to work with our group um, because um, the kind of passion and um, commitment that working artists have um, was important in us in, in kind of recognising um, the value of that for people with disability, that we, we didn't want to do this just as a kind of a hobby or a pastime or something to fill in time. Um, we wanted to have purpose. We wanted people to be recognised for the ability and the talent that they have and we wanted to nurture that um, and we've been able to work with extraordinary artists um, over the time um, our current artistic director director is Kate Stones and um, she has been with us um, for about five or six years as well um, we've worked with um, Sam Thomas who uh, is an amazing physical performer from the UK and, and came to live in Bendigo. Uh, so I came to live in Castlemaine. Um, you know, we've collaborated with other arts companies. Um, you know, we've been incredibly fortunate to work with Back to Back Theatre, uh, which is probably the, the best known uh, theatre company almost in the world. <laughs> that it, Well, yeah, in the world that are working with people with disability as, uh, you know, their, their ensemble of performers um, are disabled artists and they tour, world, tour the world with, you know, these extraordinary theatre shows that um, just explore incredibly deep, um, important themes. Um, 
and you know they so we got to work with them um you know we've got to work with uh uh some some great performers um called born in a taxi um they really inspired a lot of the way that we work physically like um the the physical body and the physical expression of people and finding ways that people are able to move in their way and in, in their space um you know we learned a lot from working with born in a taxi um and uh like we're, we're seeing on screen at the moment um a performance at uh the bendigo art gallery um on display and uh this is a performance that uh, uh an inclusive dance company in um new york heidi latsky uh developed and it's a format that they produce every year um, on International Day for People with Disability uh, in cities and towns around the world. Um, and, uh, you know, just uh, giving people that opportunity to view people, diverse, really diverse people um, inhabiting their bodies um, is an incredibly powerful uh, experience, I think, for everyone. Um, yeah, so we we work um, with uh, Bendigo venues and events. They've been incredibly generous with us and have offered us uh, studio space at the engine room, the old fire station in View Street, and um, that's enabled us to really take on these projects at a at a professional level. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're incredibly fortunate to be um, supported by the arts, uh, you know, institutions in Bendigo, um, the art gallery as well. Um, obviously, this, this piece was performed in the art gallery. Um, so yeah, we, we feel like that we, we've come a long way and we feel like we're part of the um, arts community in Bendigo and that um, yeah, it's been it's been great to be made felt made to feel welcome and I guess safe, um, uh, you know, as part of an arts community, um, you know. And when when Eliza talks about um, her journey in uh, exploring her, uh, you know, her artistic expression. I think being able to find that safe place to work from um, is what allows people to, you know, take on um, their identity and their expression of that. Um, and you know, that's that. That's what I hope we, we're able to offer people. Mm. That's interesting, John, because. Um... I feel like doing star dance because, um, you know, not only are you creating, I'm going to use the word arena or, or that safe space for people with disability to um, play um, and, and explore their art form and their art making, but also you are creating art that is so valuable to our community and for us to see and know who we are as well and have that different story um and have that different perspective and you know the beauty of it as well that a lot of and i'm i'm running out of time in this session already but the beauty of um how create a goes about constructing on and um building pieces of um theater that tells local stories um is is very powerful and astonishing pieces of work so well done to you, and I'm looking really looking forward to what's coming next. I have got a series of four short videos of local artists that we've had pre-recorded, um, local artists with disability to share their story um, and introduce us to their practice. Lyndon, who's working behind the scenes with us right now, are we looking pretty good to get going? We've got four videos. Um, Two of the artists are artists with Create A, Yvette King 
and um, Kira Drummond, um, Sarah McQueenie, who is one of the co-founding members of Create A and is on the advisory um, and a practicing artist in her own right, and also a gentleman, a poet, Andy Jackson. I think the format we're going to go for is just play all the videos um, uh, all together and then we'll come back and join you um, all again. If um, Lyndon will also be popping up um, information about where you can find um, the artists online. And if you have any questions, ideas, please put them up in chat. I'm not sure if Lyndon's still queuing, queuing the videos up. Oh, here we go. Hi, my name is Sarah McQueenie. I am a visual artist. My medium is paint, paint, and more paint. I love colour and paint. Um, I don't have a studio and have only exhibited um, in col collaboration with other artists due to inaccessibility um, relating to exhibition spaces and um, studio spaces. That's why I work for my lounge room currently I would love there to be accessible so, and as far as going uh, getting into artist residencies not a hope none of them are accessible so um kind of puts you on the back foot I am considered an outsider artist I have not form form followed formulated academia or um due to medical issues always getting in the way surgeries etc um, my education was compromised due to um, medical intervention, I suppose you'd say. And um, But I did go to university in my later years, but I did a Bachelor of Ed at the time. And um, that was, that was, I used that. I absolutely have used that. Um, especially in co-founding um, Creatability, which is now Create A with John Willis, I saw the need, as did John, for scaffolding and education within the arts sector, within people with disabilities. And it was important to employ professionals that had the ability to develop foundational skills and then um, move up and out, as well as they bring networks with them. And that has been just profound, watching where that group of people, Creatability, now Create A, have gone from strength to strength over the last 20 years. Um, I have been very privileged and very proud to um, be able to watch them grow into the incredible artists that they are today. Uh, yeah, I hope to hold exhibitions yearly. Hope, hope, fingers crossed. <laughs> and a percentage of all um, canvases or paintings sold will go to setting up a scholarship or an arts fund for people with disabilities to help them in their arts practice. Because um, there is no, there is very, there, there is very little funding for that, or there's a lot of people who would like a piece of that pie. So um, thank you for allowing me to share my story with you on International Day of People with Disability. I use 
an iPad, a communication board, keyword signs and gestures to talk. I am a performer at Create A. I travel to Bendigo each week to go to the workshops. I leave Ballarat at 7.30 a.m. and get back at 5.30 p.m. I go with a friend from Ballarat. At Create A, I help to write the shows and I perform in them. Mm. I have traveled to different towns to show our performances. I help to make the costumes we wear in the shows. I enjoy performing because I like to show off my work. I like people to come and see what we do. I like being part of Create A because I get to try new things. I have been in a harness high above the stage. I have worked with sound equipment. I have been in films. I have been in a newspaper. Being a performer is important to me because it shows people what I can do. Performing also helps me find what I can do. My sisters and I inspire each other. My sister Zoe is an opera singer. She lives in London. Zoe is in lots of shows. I love to see her perform. Ruby is a nurse and she likes to perform too. I feel so proud when I see them perform. I am very happy to be a part of Create Aid. I feel so good when I am performing. Hi, my name's Andy and I'm a practicing poet with a disability. Being an artist with a disability to me means that I'm in a unique position to be able to speak about my own experience in a way that is uh, challenges some of the myths around what it means to have a body that is unusual or different or extraordinary. And I can disrupt some of those myths. I can be honest about the suffering and the discomfort and alienation. But I can also talk about the insight of being different. And also in a, in a way that I can maintain my own privacy. So I can keep some mystery to my experience as well. Poetry and being an artist with a disability means that I can also enter into a community, a community of empathy and a community of attentiveness. So it means I can connect up with other disabled poets who talk about their own experience and question the way the world is as well. But it also connects me up with people who aren't disabled but can understand or can begin to appreciate what it means uh, and what things might need to change to make the world uh, more livable for all of us. So poetry for me is powerful and affirming of what is precious. And uh, yeah, that's what it means to me. I'm, I'm back. Sorry about I've had some trouble with sound then, and I'm very sorry Yvette's video didn't play uh, the sound. I believe Lyndon is going to repost the videos on the Emporium Facebook page so you can see them. That was just fantastic to um, hear from some of our local artists and uh, to hear about their practice. Um, and just the intertwining of their artistic practice and um, who they are and how they're navigating through life. Is there anything you both would like to share or reflect on um, the local creative practice here in Bendigo and in Kassan? Well, I, I just want to say how great that was. <laughs> That's all I want to say. I just think that was so I just think this, this is so great to have these conversations and to hear those perspectives. It was, I loved it. So immersive. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is, and as, as Eliza has said, just 
having that visible and talking about it and seeing it um, makes it real <laughs> and makes it makes more things possible. Um, and yeah, I guess that that's what has been great about working um, in Castlemaine and Bendigo and, and in this region. Um, yeah, and I, I think, you know, there's, there's a whole lot of potential for showing um, what regional centres um, are able to do uh, and the kinds of things that we're able to produce here. Um, partly because of our scale, I think some, I've found it easier to be collaborative and to work with other people. Um, and I, I think that's been valuable. Hmm. That, that sort of leads into one of my next questions, um, which is about that notion of collaboration. Um, you know, for Create A, it's been about um, artists with and without disability. It's been about um, organisations in the arts and not in the arts. Um, and, and for you, Eliza, as well, um, a collaboration or um, moving into new art forms as you know definitely creating new arenas to tell your story and others story what what makes that successful and why is it so valuable well what do you think john <laughs> do you want to i mean I, I think our collaboration's been great and what we've done with um create a eh? yeah so yeah, I, I can speak on that, but I'd love to hear your perspective first. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just think, you know, working together is, um, well, well, I guess, particularly for people that we're working with, um, there's necessarily an involvement of support in their lives. They, they need to work with other people in order to um, you know, do the things that they need to do in, in their day. Um, and so w negotiating that relationship um, is, uh, takes a lot of time and takes a building up of trust. Um, and I think it, it has taught us a lot of things about just how we work with each other generally and how we, as artists, we work. Um, and paying attention to, um, what it is to build up that trust, um, I, I think, is something that allows us to do to do everything else. Mm. Um, yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, I wanted to say, I guess, you know, I spoke about that that whole idea of leadership with people with disability having um, people with disability in those roles as leaders within arts organisations and. Um, you know, that whole notion of nothing about us without us. But I actually have to, whilst I believe that, I have decided to really think about a more progressive way. And that progressive way to me is actually non-disabled people and disabled people coming together to create art and to create work. Uh, it's actually where I feel like the future is. I think it's... Um, I've really been thinking a lot about this and talking a lot about this with many people. And in fact, actually, that is, yeah, that to me is progression. We can come together and um, because it's where we'll all we'll learn about each other and gain different perspectives and understand each other as human beings. Um, so it's, yeah, that's, that's the whole interesting thing for me about Create A is that relationship of non-disabled people and disabled people coming together and joining as one. Um, yeah, but yeah. also also bringing people into those roles mm. that traditionally only non-disabled people have had, like, well, like choreographers or, you know, directors or um, working as uh, in, in the technical side of things. Um, you know, it, it is a journey. It, it, it is something that will take time, um, yep. but it's absolutely uh, a direction that we need to go in. Mm. Yeah, look, I think you're right. I think it's not a level playing field in terms of having disabled people 
up the front in leadership positions in all different roles. If that needs to still continue to happen, those spaces need to be filled by a diverse group of people. But um, I do also believe that it's kind of, you know, if we just put people in categories, it, it potentially will create more segregation. So actually by coming together, that will create unity. And that's where I think, you know, education can happen as well as art. So it's, yeah, it's both. It's, it's creating space for disabled people, just giving them opportunities so that they can be in leadership positions and all different positions, it's representation, but it's also coming together of non-disabled people and disabled people. And I think that's where progression is, where it's not segregated, it's inclusive of all. Yeah, yeah. The, the tension, I guess, in that is that, um, you know, is there a risk that the voice of disabled artists gets diluted um, in, in that um, kind of way because there is a power imbalance. Um, how, do, what's, what's your experience of that, Eliza? Do, do yeah. you feel like I mean, it's very complex, um, but I think it takes certain people, doesn't it? Like, I think you have to have understanding of disability. You can't just tell disabled people stories for them. I think it's, it has to be that disabled people are still able to share their own stories and perspectives, but having, um, but being a part of that is okay. I don't, you know, as long as you're not overpowering, taking away, uh, or telling stories for people. Um, but yeah, I, it is, it's, it's very, <laughs> I, yeah, it's, uh, I don't have all the answers actually. I'm still learning and, um, it's something I'm, often thinking about at the moment yeah i mean for instance it's something very different but i'm working with the south Sydney community and then you go on a show called by um as pam said in the introduction and yeah i'm not a person of color and so i you know when i first started with arena i was really strong on that whole thing is it can't be you know if you're going to create work it, i can't really be within that work because I'm not a person of colour. I don't understand their experience. I can gain understanding, but I'm not, I don't have that lived experience. Um, but so that, you know, and I was really advocating for that within the disability space. And then I felt like I was really contradicting myself by creating work with people of colour. Um, but I've actually been, I've, I've really had a big lesson this week, and it was by one of the artists, and they said, You're wrong. And they said, you're wrong, Eliza. And automatically I went, yeah. I, I, I got my back up a little bit. I felt like, oh, you know, you automatically feel like, um, you know, am I wrong? Are those questions coming to mind? But I absolutely welcomed it and took it on. And she basically said, like, I don't, that is segregation. We want you to be part of this. You have to, you can't be an outsider. And you can't be someone that just watches. You have to be part of this with us. So it was a real lesson for me because um, yep. so it's but I would I will never tell the stories for these women. I wouldn't that is their story to tell. Um, I'll be a facilitator, I think. That's more it. Mm. A facilitator of their story. And I think that that's a way that you do it with create yeah. A really well. Like you never tell their stories, you're a facilitator for their art. Yeah, and I think we we recognizing that there is difference people do have different experience people do see the world differently they move differently um that and that 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 is something that we need to recognize and not not work out work against um you know uh it, it's been amazing working with kyra who you saw in in that video um and when we're working to do um, a piece of choreography, for instance, um, involving Kyra, she, we, we want to preserve her movement. We don't want to just um, homogenize everything and have all of our performers do exactly the same moves, you know, synchronized. Um, there is something that is uh, incredibly rich 
about learning from the way that Kyra moves and um, using that movement to, to inform how we might make a piece that involves physical movement. Mm. Definitely one of my favourite moments actually was when Kyra was in a harness and was lifted up into the air and I was singing that song that I wrote about her. Um, one of the, one of my highlights of my artistic career was that moment. It was, it was mm. incredible because to see how empowering that was for her, um, yeah. I'll never forget it. her face. I don't know if you remember it, John. It was just, I do. She was just yeah. so happy. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, thank, yeah. Thank you so much to both of you. We, we are running out of time in this session and it's just flown by. This is a long, long overdue conversation and I really hope there's more. One thing I just couldn't help adding in is, you know, um, my my experience with Create A is um, also that I think, John, you, when you're talking about, um, you know, slowing things down and making space, um, you know, in a lot of ways for me, Create A's artistic practice um, is set up deliberately for collaboration and play, which can be duplicated in so many different ways for all sorts of different people to participate in and make great art. Yeah, yeah, that's certainly been one of the learnings for us that in many ways we're forced to work slower and that has allowed extraordinary creative practice to develop. Mm. Thank you so much for mm. what you give and continue to give to our um, creative industries and to our community in general. Can't wait till what 2021 brings. I hear uh, some whispers that uh, Create A are entering into some interesting partnerships around tech. Um, Eliza, what have you got coming up? Oh, or is it secret? After today, International Day of People with Disability, it's um, I'm going to have a big rest. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, I am going to start all over again. I'm going to put out a book uh, called We've Got This. Uh, on parenting with disability. I'm going to release a new record. I'm going to work on uh, on the show by uh, theatre work with Arena Theatre with the Bendigo South Sudanese community. And I'm also going to make a podcast around uh, the disability human rights. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> and try and do some more, you know, who knows? No worries. Great day again. So that'll be good. Sounds good. And hey, hi, Yvette. Thank you for joining us. Good to hear from you. Um, I'm sorry the sound didn't work on your video, but we'll repost it on um, Facebook. I need to do a quick shout out for the Emporium Creative Hub, which is all about community um, and bringing people together and making more opportunity happen in our creative industries. Um, I believe the doors are open for co-working, for people to book out studio space to um, do photography and film work and also um, a networking event coming up. So thank you once again. Thank, thank you so much, John. Thanks so much, Tim. And thank you, Eliza. Thank you.